speed bump there, apologize about that. Uh, my name is Daniel Mendez. Um, I'm representing Invictus Engineering here, and this is my partner, uh, Nicholas. Oh, okay. Now, plagiocephaly is a very long word for basically head molding. That's basically what it is. Plagiocephaly is characterized by a persistent flat spot on the back or side of a child's head. Now, when a, when a child is born premature, uh, if they're born premature enough, they're put in an incubator where they have uh, machines breathing for them, and there are devices when they're in the incubator to help prevent this head molding or this plagiocephaly. Each hospital has their own method or their own uh, products that they use, but it's relatively effective. But after they're uh, done in the incubator, they're moved to an open bassinet. At this point, they're still preterm, they're still premature. And when they're in the open bassinet, there is currently nothing there to help prevent plagiocephaly due to the guidelines in place for sudden infant death syndrome, or SIDS. Uh, they can't have a soft mattress, they can't have a pillow, they can't have anything, and they're sleeping on a hard mattress because uh, as sudden infant uh, death syndrome regulations, uh, they say that, uh, you can't have anything that restricts chest movement or anything that could obstruct the airways uh, of the, uh, the child's mouth. So, <laughs> currently, 20% of all children that are born premature will experience plagiocephaly. They will experience it to a point where it's severe enough that they have to undergo recorrective measures, which was that little helmet that you saw on the other slide that I'm going to get to in a second. Um, they have to undergo recorrective measures and sometimes surgery. Now it's important to note that more than 20% will suffer from plagiocephaly, but only 20% of all premature children will experience it to a severity that they need this. And currently the only method to prevent this while they're in the open bassinet is nurses uh, manually rotating their heads uh, from time to time. So it takes time out of the nurse's day. So what we need is we need something to to distribute this pressure, we, we need something to reduce the amount of force that is experienced by any single point on the child's head. And the way we can do this is by distributing that pressure. If we can distribute the pressure, if we can meet SIDS guidelines, boom, plagiocephaly is gone. And, uh, and that's basically the, our, our main design points in, in what we're trying to achieve. And that helmet that you see at the bottom is actually uh, one of those recorrective helmets I'm talking about. It literally forces a uh, child's head down in certain areas and has other cavities to allow the head kind of to grow into. But that is something that's done after the fact, after it's already happened. And at that point, the child is already uh, full term. Their, their craniums are already calcifying to a point where it's becoming very difficult to perform any kind of recorrective measures. So what we came up with is the aqua bonnet. It's a thin cotton bonnet with gel packs neatly tucked inside. And this gel is, is, is very, uh, it's relatively elegant. Um, it has antimicrobial agents in it. Um, it has uh, antibacterial agents inside of it. And what this gel does is it, all, it gives it a medium to, to distribute that pressure around the skull, like I said, to reduce the amount of force experienced on any single point of the child's head. Now our aqua bonnet also has an open top to allow heat to properly dissipate. It has holes for the ears to allow uh, hearing to properly develop. And the specific heat of the gel is it's carefully selected not, uh, so that it doesn't draw heat away from the child's head, but at the same time, it doesn't insulate the child's head because overheating can be uh, an issue. And this is one of our preliminary solid models that we performed or we designed of the, uh, the aqua bonnet. And as you can see, it has an open uh, forehead. Uh, the, the cotton bonnet has these uh, elastic bands and uh, we're going to have three different sizes, small, medium, and large. And you will know when the child needs the next size because when that elastic band expands, you'll be able to see those inner threads. And those inner threads will be uh, red, whereas the other threads will be white. So once a nurse sees red threads, it's time to go up a size. Also, it has these <coughs> flaps around the jaw that the nurse can easily move to the side because when a, a nurse feeds uh, an infant, they have to support their, their jaw. So they, they kind of reach their hands around the back, support the jaw while they feed the child. So it's not invasive to nurse routines whatsoever. And we, we want this to be the standard of care in every single NICU because there is no way to tell which children are more susceptible to plagiocephaly. The only way to tell if a child is susceptible is after it already happened and that 
by that point, it's pretty much already too late. So that's, that's why we need to be standard of care. And in addition to that, it's, it's uh, very easy for nurses to use. It's not invasive and uh, it's very simple. Currently, like I said, there's nothing in an open bassinet to help prevent plagiocephaly. All the nurses are doing is manually rotating their heads and that is not solving the problem because as you can see, there's still 20% of all premature born infants that experience this. So essentially our market's on tap. There are 500,000 premature born children, or children born premature, sorry, every single year in the United States. 500,000, 13 million worldwide. So as you can see, it's, it's, it's a problem. Some of the things that we're gonna be doing in our uh, near future is uh, teaming up with a medical manufacturer so that we can uh, do our first product, not production runs, but our test runs to uh, submit to, uh, to prepare our uh, FDA filing. We're also gonna be teaming up with uh, regulatory specialists um, I myself used to work for KCI. I worked in the R&D department, uh, specifically in verification and validation, where I tested their future products to FDA standards. I designed test protocols, test procedures, and the information that I was able to gather, uh, someone else in my team actually compiled into the 510K. So although I can do a little bit, I can't do everything, and that's, that's what we recognize, and that's uh, one of the reasons why we need to bring uh, people on in the near future. In addition to that, after that step, the next step is teaming up with uh, uh, hospital equipment suppliers so we can get our product on the market. So I'm assuming the 510K approval pathway is probably not going to be too long, probably three, six months, do you think? Um, the timeline, I'm not positive. Um, that's one of the things that we need to uh, bring on a specialist about. Yeah. Uh, but as far as the information required for, for our 510K, it's going to be relatively simple. Um, there are companies that... Uh, predicate devices. Predicate devices, but they're made for children in the uh, incubator. Okay. And uh, our proprietary uh, design, what makes us um, uh, patentable is, is the, the way we're delivering this technology uh, via a bonnet. Whereas uh, the companies that make something for the incubator, it's, it's literally just a gel pillow. So we're taking that a couple steps ahead. What do you think your price out of? Uh, our price, uh, I forgot to mention this, um, our, our price is $300. And uh, basically the competition are those helmets. $3,000 for one of those helmets to be made. Uh, each helmet is custom made uh, for the child by a neonatal development specialist. So you have 3K right there just for the helmet, and then in addition to that, you have all those hospital, I'm sorry, the specialist visits that uh, the family has to make. And your, and your whole device is a disposable, you know? The exactly. hospitals wouldn't reuse the gel for the new cotton. Nope, it's 100% uh, disposable. Um, they, they are made to be um, sanitized, because a lot of hospitals, they do things on the cheap, and they sanitize whatever they can and reuse it. Um, so it will be made to do that, but it is not disposable. It's, I'm sorry, it is disposable. 